As we work towards building community resilience, one thing we've learned is that equity is fundamental to foster healing. There's no way that you can really be working towards being trauma-informed if you're not working towards equity. Many childhood adversities have their root in community environments steeped in inequity. These include areas of concentrated poverty, unaffordable or inadequate housing, and a higher number of juveniles and adults who are criminal justice involved. So what's old is new again, and we keep building upon these inequities. Inequity was built in, was baked into the system from the very beginning with the declaration. And building community resilience, we understand that the pair of ACEs, adverse childhood experiences in the context of adverse community environments, are the result of policies and practices across multiple systems that were perfectly designed for the place-based and race-based inequities they produce. Building Community Resilience Network partners from across the country understand the pathway to healing trauma and building resilience starts by looking at the policies and practices driving adverse outcomes, whether they be race, gender, age, economic, or place-based. Um, one thing I've always kind of told myself is that the power is already there with the people. Um, we, have all, we have created policy practices and procedures and institutions that have stripped away their power. I mean, made them believe they were powerless and, and, and therefore they're hopeless. As many in the BCR movement have learned, this perspective requires personal reflection as we consider our individual role in healing the hurt and creating opportunity to build equity and resilience. Through this work, we have come to understand that inequitable community conditions provide little access to supports or buffers that support the ability to bounce back and thrive. In trying to do something good can offend people. So I would caution, especially the people of dominant culture, <laughs> to be aware of that when, and to educate yourself and get some training and do some research. Alive and Well communities in St. Louis and Kansas City have been working to improve equity by lifting up the community voice. They have found these voices to be essential in driving effective systems change. To close race-based inequity, we must examine all levels on which structural racism is propagated, consider our role in these systems, and commit ourselves to change. We're using the pair of ACEs to do that, to help them name what's in their soil and what's in their history that's keeping them from getting to well being. An aspect of equity work is challenging our own assumptions, no matter our race, religion, gender, education, or economic status. I had to humble myself and check myself as a black woman and just say, okay, I'm showing up all wrong. First of all, I'm not saving anybody. I'm not working for anyone. I'm working with, these are the experts and I'm actually here to learn before we can move forward with solutions. BCR teams are actively promoting the equity conversation as each team begins to incorporate equity into their resilience strategies. To learn more about our efforts, Follow us on Twitter for updates and lessons learned along the journey. Together, we will build a resilient and equitable nation.